setting the right expectation for your AI. I'm Tanya Hall for ZDNet and Tech Republic, and joining me is Omar Tawakul, CEO at Voicea. Welcome, Omar. Thank you. So what does Voicea do, and what prompted you to start the company? You know, I ran the Oracle Data Cloud before this in a company called Blue Kai, and I met great executives and spent a lot of time in meetings. And meetings were just reviled by people. People spent so much time in them, and they weren't getting enough done. And they went from meeting to meeting to meeting, hoping to remember what they had promised and what they needed to do. And so when I watched the best executives and CEOs in the world, we, we learned that people were responsive and efficient and that we could democratize these skills by building an enterprise voice assistant that could help people get way more out of their meetings. Why might the term AI be confusing and problematic for consumers? Yeah, it really is. My big beef with choosing AI as an acronym for us to all talk about is it sets the expectation so high, right? Because when you talk about intelligence, being able to have a conversation like we're having, it is... Uh, there's so much involved in it. And then when you create a piece of software that does some very specialized thing that supposedly has AI, instantly the consumer has these expectations that are not so easy to satisfy. So sometimes AI helps. So you understand it's not a classic piece of software, but I think a lot of times it, it, it maybe messes with your expectations. As you designed an AI-powered business assistant, how did you identify which tasks the assistant should take on and how did you assemble the data set underlying the rules for her performance? Oh, data is everything. When you look at, uh, first off, why did we choose, choose meetings and voice? Um, if you look at other areas of work like calendar and email, they're already dominated by two companies who own half the data of the world in calendar and email. Voice in the enterprise, on the other hand, is in the ether. 99.99% of all conversations in the enterprise are dropped on the floor. There's no system of record. Nobody owns the data. That means it's a more of a green field opportunity for you to go in, build an assistant people can trust, that they can value. And once you start collecting the data, you get better and better. So if you look at uh, our case, we map out the last year and the assistant has been getting more and more accurate as it trains on more and more data. And we are really just scratching the surface. We grew about 100x last year. So you can imagine how that you know, gives us the ability to be better at what we do. Talk about the risks inherent in having an AI-powered assistant predict what you want it to do. Yeah, so that's a really good point. One of the things that we've learned to get better at over the past year is how to set the expectations correctly. So I'll give you an example. We've developed this algorithm that will listen to the notes, transcribe, and try to identify important moments in the meeting and send them to you. And what we found is that we no longer merchandise that. Instead of telling people that we're identifying the important moments, which really sets an unrealistically high expectation because what you think is important is different than what I think is important, what we do is we allow people to use a voice command or to tap and do something that, that explicitly lets the AI know, hey, I think this moment in the meeting is important. And then we can transcribe it accurately. We can connect it to Salesforce or to Trello or to Asana or Evernote. And we do all these interesting things once you intentfully tell us what to do. So we've learned that it's better to give people controls to let them know that their intent drives. Why do I say this? Imagine if Alexa, instead of responding to you to say, play music, it looks at who's in your kitchen and decides whether to play romantic or angry music. Well, that would probably not be a great idea because <laughs> it's going to get it wrong. Instead, you tell Alexa to play a song. So we have that model too. You walk in and you say, okay, Eva, remind me to send the contract tonight at 5 p.m. And, and because you're now telling us, it's much easier for us to please you. So getting that expectation right is crucial. As you rolled out, Eva, what surprises or unexpected outcomes did you encounter from users? And what did you learn or what were your takeaways from them? You know, one of the really interesting takeaways we had is that when you do transcription, one of the biggest problems is that people's idealized version of the speech in their memory has nothing to do with the reality. What I mean by that is you walk into a meeting and you say all these things, which to you sound brilliant. And, uh, and when you walk out, you're almost remembering a Shakespearean novel. But the reality of what was said had you know all these ums and it had pauses and interruptions and repetition. This other day I was in a meeting and a squirrel passed by and someone said squirrel. And that actually showed up in the transcript. And so when you read the transcript, you're like, what the hell is a squirrel doing in this transcript until you listen to the audio and realize it actually was there. And so 
one of the one of the things that you have to do is give people a visualization of the meeting that includes the video, the speech, the text, a navigation device, so they can get to important meeting meetings as opposed to just a dry document that they read through. It'll kind of look funny. So that's really one of the interesting, um, and and the, we've learned so many things like that in terms of how you have to, you know, deal with people's um, kind of desires and expectations. What technology advancements do you see on the horizon that, once implemented, will facilitate the next big step for AI, 5G maybe? You know, for us, it's less of a one and done and more of a continual improvement of the models. We have an ensemble technology, which is we run multiple ASRs, and then we run a deep learning layer on top of it. It assembles the answers of all the ASRs, and it gives you a performance profile that's like the envelope of performance of any of the individual ASRs. So it outperforms all of them, which is great. Uh, but we just need it to get better and better. And so how do we get it to be better and better? One, more data around uh, out of vocabulary words. Your vocabulary may be different than mine. And if I learn your vocabulary specifically, your accuracy for you will go up. Two, uh, your accent. You don't have an accent, but other people do. And learning those accents uh, makes you better. The acoustic environment. And right now we're on a Zoom call. Somebody else is on WebEx. Somebody else is on Skype. Learning the different acoustic models. All of that will get us more accuracy. Then there's speaker labeling. Getting better and better at understanding it's me versus you speaking and labeling uh, that in the text. Then there's preferences on what you find important versus what I find important. Letting the algorithm know that better and better. And finally, you impact, you know, uh, Evernote. I push mine to uh, uh, Trello. I don't know what you actually do but you see being able to learn those preferences and pushing content in the right places all those require learning data more accuracy uh, so we've got plenty to do uh, on that level what advice would you offer to a business executive who seeks to incorporate AI to perform a consumer facing task uh, set the right expectations the use of the word AI in itself will set the wrong expectations before you even say hello. So make sure that you are very specific. I'll give you an example. When Siri first came out and they hired all these fantastic, fantastic actors and actors to do all the stuff on TV, it almost made you feel like uh, Siri was going to be your friend and was going to cook your meal. Uh, and, and, and it didn't. Uh, Alexa came in and you kind of got introduced to Alexa with like play a song, play a timer. And then, and then the expectations rose. So I would learn from that example and say whatever business problem you're trying to solve, find the piece of the problem where you can correctly set the expectation that it's not some super magical thing and just beat it. And then raise the bar incrementally. Too many people rush to the finish line on all the great things AI can do. And then when it doesn't like cook your meal and give you a massage, you're disappointed. Omar Tawakul, founder and CEO of Voicia. Thanks for joining us and uh, shedding some light on this area. If somebody wants to connect with you, how can they do that? Great. Please come reach us at voicia.ai. That's just voice with an A at the end. And I'm Omar T at voicia.ai. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And if you guys want to find more of my interviews, you can do that right here on ZDNet or Tech Republic or go to my website, tanyahall.net. I've got links to all my social sites. Thanks for watching.